I'm here at the New Hampshire Liberty Forum uh, 2012, and I'm here with Ron Helwig, who I met at the Agoras Forum yesterday, and I wanted to talk to you about silver. Sure. Um, you said in the, in the conference that you were on the Liberty Dollar originally, um, and now you're working with Shire Silver. Yep. And so I, it was it was surprising to me that that staff had migrated from one project to the other. So if you could tell me a little bit about that transition. Sure. I uh, uh, back in '98, I was uh, I was in a philosophy group that a friend of mine, Dave, had started. It was Dave's objectivist group. Um, you know, discussing all kinds of stuff, libertarianism, uh, objectivist philosophy, uh, just all kinds of good stuff. It was a great experience. Um, but for Christmas, uh, the, the Christmas uh, edition of the uh, discussion, I showed up first, and so I got the best present, which was a, uh, a warehouse receipt for a half an ounce of silver, and it was one of the first Liberty Dollar certificates. And that really put me on the path of sound money and investigating into all that. And so I, in 99, I signed up with the Liberty Dollar as a uh, regional currency officer. Okay, can you explain what that is? Uh, that's basically the, the, the salesmen that are out there. Um, you get the would buy the silver at a reduced price from the Liberty Dollar office and go out and try to use it and try to sign up merchants um, to get to build up the trading network to get more people actually using silver as an everyday So that it becomes a thing that's in circulation. Exactly. So that more people can receive the perfect gift. Right. Yeah. And uh, so, so that's why you know I can say that I'm on a mission for a dog. Um, what so, does that mean? <laughs> well, it, from the old Blue Bro Blues Brothers movie, okay. you know they're all they're doing all this chasing in, the, in their you know, the, the, one of the nice joke lines is that they're on a mission for God because they're they're trying to save the uh, the, the home that they grew up in. Okay. Um, and so so my take on it is yeah I'm on a, I'm on a mission for God. Uh, that set me on my course. Okay. And yet it has been, uh, it's, it's become my mission, um, it's my, of the, of the two issues that I think are, in my opinion, the most important for straightening out the world, getting us to a more libertarian, free society, um, one is education and the other is the monetary system. Right. And so many people have been working on education in all kinds of different ways that um, I didn't feel that, that as many people were working on a monetary thing, so that's another reason why I developed that into my mission. Right. The Liberty Dollar did say that it was an educational tool. Yeah, yeah, that too. I don't know if that was first and foremost, but definitely as a, as a purpose. But then something happened to the Liberty Dollar. Yeah. Um, here in New Hampshire, uh, uh, I was one of the... Uh, I was the 103rd mover to the Free State. Wow. Um, so an early mover, which has great advantage. Um, I know almost all of the movers and shakers, the, the other early movers. Um, back then it was such a small community that when anything was going on, everybody showed up. Just uh, for the viewers, the Free State Project is a movement of like-minded, liberty-minded activists who are all moving to New Hampshire to consolidate their effort and achieve uh, liberty in our lifetime. And so so uh, tell me what happened to the Liberty Dollar. Okay, so so we were, I had I had the New Hampshire Liberty Dollar website up and running, um, and I had organized a meeting of all the people, mostly Free Staters, but some some natives who who were, we were going to start really pushing it here in New Hampshire, get it going, um, and really because we could do it better here than anywhere else. We've got the, the concentration, we've got the people. Um, but our meeting was scheduled for what happened to be two days after the Liberty Dollar got raided by the feds. Um, so our meeting 
basically just got changed into, okay, what do we do now? It's a strategy we need now. Yeah, and so we, we, we discussed, well, first of all, what did the Liberty Dollar group do wrong? Uh, what could they have done better? And how can we make sure that that doesn't happen to us? Because um, we still wanted to move forward. You know, the, the, the idea of using some money is something we, we really need. Um, but with the Liberty Dollar having been attacked, uh, we didn't know at the time how long it was going to take if it was ever going to come back up. Um, and it's been years, and it still hasn't. Because the justice system is always so sad. Yeah. <laughs> so so we, we decided what we really wanted to do was have distributed manufacturing. Make it so cheap and easy to make your own that anybody could do it, that you could have your own mint in your garage, in your basement. Um, That's almost like the internet strategy. Yeah. Right? Whenever you see you know, the, the, the distributed service attacks and things that Anonymous does, the way that the internet has responded to central power is with decentral power. Yeah, exactly. Right? And, and so, so we started looking and designing and trying all kinds of ways to mint coins. Um, but we just found that, at least at small scale, it's, it's nowhere near cost effective. Um, we were calculating that you would, need, you would need to do production runs in the 20 to 30,000 range in order to keep the price close to something that people would actually be willing to accept. Right. So after a few years of, of trying to do that, um, we came up with the idea of trying to make them credit card size. And that morphed into actually making them into the plastic laminated cards that have the metal inserted inside them. Right. Yeah, I have lots of them. They're easy to carry. Yes. You know? So that is, what is this? This is That's 0.5 grams of silver. Yep. Which is, what would you say the value of that is? Uh, I'm selling for today for a dollar. For a dollar. Um, so that's like a $1 bill, but it's a $1 bill that will be worth $2 in 10 years or something, right? Like yeah. It's a, um, well, and here's here's a great example. This is a one gram silver card. Um, and when I was at the first pork fest, I was selling these for a dollar. Now they're $2. So for, now they're $2. So how yeah. long ago was that? that was, well, that was at the first one where I was doing this, which was like two years ago. Right. So in two years, this has, well, in, in. So if, if you and the merchants in your community were using this to buy their bread and whatever, then um, then the price of bread wouldn't have inflated. Correct. Right? Yeah. It would still cost the same amount of silver, approximately, but they're That's not getting those cost of living increases, probably. Right. Well, what, what I'd like to see is, I'd like to see merchants put both prices on their on their store shelves. If you've got the, the price in dollars and the price in silver grams, yeah. what you're going to see eventually is the the gram price sticker is going to become old and gray and maybe start fading. While the it dollar because it stays the same and the dollar price one is going to be fresh and new because they're going to have to change it, you know, maybe not every week but every month or two. So, so I want to get kind of sci-fi with you, because we talked in the Agris Forum about the idea of a gold credit card or, uh, or digitizing precious metals to use as currency, yeah. and what you said was, the government won't let us. <laughs> right. And this is what Peter Schiff said yesterday, was he said that, that people have this, people already have gold and silver pool accounts tied to MasterCards that they can use at merchants, but not at America. Yep. Right, and that shocked me because that's been what I've wanted for a long time. I mean, it's almost ideal. That's that would be fantastic. You just have the one card, you carry it around, and you can use it 